know, Casey Everhart, another guy that really knows social media, a guy that really understands leads. He's got a great uh, product and series on lead generation. He's recently uh, taken an advisory and a leadership role with a company called DNet. I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. But this is a guy that can just give you tons of little tiny nuggets that are very easy to implement. So we do a lot of this mindset type of stuff. Uh, and then we also do marketing type stuff. This is going to be heavy hitting, fast paced, more meat per minute than any other marketing presentation you've ever seen, guaranteed, or your money back. Or your money back. Matter of fact, I'll do a double your money back guarantee on Gacy's presentation. All right? All right, everybody, let's give uh, Casey a big warm round of applause here. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Casey. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll play that one again, because it's early. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you guys ready? <laughs> um, we're going to play full out for the next, I don't know, hour, hour 15 minutes together. Is that cool? Yes, you have to promise me, though, that you'll play full out. I will promise you this, by the way, the reason you'll... <laughs> The, the reason David said that this is probably more, more marketing stuff than you'll get in, in an hour packed is um, I'm drinking an energy drink this morning. <laughs> Maria's seen me speak before, and she's like, yeah, now we've breaking out an energy drink. It's, it's a problem. So, uh, right? So I am not a linear speaker, which means that this is going to be a very conversational presentation, which means there are going to be four conversations that take place over the course of the next hour. Okay? First off, there's going to be the conversation that I have with all of you. There's also going to be the conversation that you have with me. There's also going to be the conversation you have with each other. And then finally, there's going to be the conversation that you have in your head. <laughs> right? That conversation in your head is the only conversation I am interested in turning down the volume on for the next hour. OK? After the next hour, you can let your mind chatter go back to going back to whatever. But if you can turn that volume down just for sort of the next hour, I promise you, you will get far more out of the presentation. Okay, I'm very conversational. I know this material inside and out, backwards, forward, all sorts of sideways. So the more conversation we have around this topic, the better you'll be at implementing it. And that is one of the biggest things that when you walk away today from me, you will have some stuff to be able to implement Monday morning. Is that fair? That's my promise to you. I'll also say, just because I want, to put the, I want to put this out there, I'm not here to dry, dry, you know, drive some big sales out of you today. My product is $40, okay? So, and I will only talk to you about that product in the last five minutes, and I will ask if I've earned the right to share that with you. If I haven't earned the right from you as a collective group, we leave that part out, we all go away totally happy. Is that fair? It's fair? OK, so everybody can, can, can put the mind chatter down like, oh, this dude's in a jacket. He's going to try to sell me something, right? So speaking of jackets, <laughs> I'm over it, which means it's done. <laughs> I had to make, you know, when you're a speaker, you know, you have to make the promoters love you, right? So you wear a jacket, and then as soon as they leave the room or as soon as they go back to the back, if they start doing then you can take it off and get to work. So just by a show of hands, I just kind of want to get a gauge of the room real quick. Uh, how many of you are speakers? OK, 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 cool. So would today's presentation be helpful if I kind of did a little bit what David did yesterday, where I'm kind of giving you a presentation, and I'm kind of giving you kind of a side presentation about what I'm talking about? As a speaker, would that be helpful? Yeah? OK, so show of hands again. Just I want to see speakers again. Oh, almost all of you. Oh, cool. OK, so, so then let me say this before I even enter the presentation. Um, I am a speaker that, that speaks a lot. I, out of all of my friends that are, that are speakers, I probably speak more than most of them. I do about 18 presentations a month. I travel around the world. I speak in front of a lot of people. Uh, I do not have a business card. I do not have a website. I do not have a speaker reel. I do not have a speaker one sheet. What I have is my ability to communicate effectively, and I own a lot of digital real estate, which means that if somebody's searching on the internet for a keynote speaker, a motivational speaker, a marketing speaker, a social media speaker, they can't help but to find me. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to own the digital space for your industry. right? 
This is Icon Mindset and Market Marketing Conference, which means we're going to talk a little bit mindset and a little bit marketing. We're going to combine them together. And at the end, you'll have a really good plan. And what I'm going to walk you through at the end, you'll be able to use over and over and over again. And uh, did you talk about the law of multipli multiplicity yesterday? Yeah. Awesome. So you guys, did anybody miss that presentation about multiplicity? You create a message one time, and then that one time message gets spread into multiple locations, retooled, rebranded, repurposed, so that if you do something one time, it's leverage, right? Gave, David talks a lot about green time, which is go time. It's your high leveraged activities. It's what you do today is going to produce leads and opportunities for you and your business later on. Does that make sense? OK. So let's, uh, I want you to think about, before we get started, this is the mindset piece, right? I want you to think about the 15-year-olds in your life, OK? Could be, <laughs> exactly, OK? I want you to, seriously, this is, a, this is really important. Think of the 15-year-old in your life. It could be the neighbor that rips the plants out of your planter, your grandson, your granddaughter, your son, your daughter, your kids, your kids' friends. Does everybody have a 15-year-old in their mind? Come on. OK, we're going to wait till everybody has one in their mind. Do you know a 15-year-old? Can you think about what a 15-year-old might act like and behave you like? Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. OK, yes. She won't qualify for what I'm about to say, <laughs> but maybe. OK, we all have somebody in mind, even if it's just a profile. In 1,000 days from now, they run the world. Okay, let me repeat that, because I want to make sure that this, this, is, this is so important. In 1,000 days, they run the world. They turn 18, and we have some choices to make. We can either jump on board the technology train, which is where these kids live and breathe, or we can let our businesses die on the vine, which is what's going, and that's just an inevitability of what's going to happen. For those of you that are speakers, here's the thing. These kids are coming up, and they can put you in front of more people with one post on a Facebook page, one meetup group. One, one thing can change the, can change the entire Space. I, funny thing about my nephew, I have a 10-year-old nephew. Just to show you the importance of this technology piece, because we're going to talk a lot about technology today, my 9-year-old nephew got an iPad last Christmas. Now, we could certainly argue that no 9-year-old is in need of an iPad for Christmas, but that's what grandparents are for, right? So here's what happens. I go, I can't find him at like noon. I'm like, where is this kid? He is in the garage with the I brand new iPad ripped open with a soldering gun, and he is re-soldering parts of the iPad. Because he can get infinite guys on Angry Birds. Right? This is a nine-year-old that has lived and breathed technology and to such a point that they are ripping apart iPads and different pieces of technology configuring it. Now, that freaked me out for a second, and then I hired him. <laughs> because, the, because here's the reality. A lot of us are looking at who we're choosing as our mentors. Right, and I, do this, I ask big groups of people who your mentors are, and I hear the same people all the time. Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, who else? Kiyosaki, who else? Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, Dan Kennedy, right? My, my mentors, while that's a great set of mentors to have, my new set of mentors are age 15 to 18. They know how this world works, and it's going to be theirs in a few minutes. I mean, if you think about 1,000 days, that's not a long time, right? Now, we have a couple of choices. We can be right, or we can be rich. <laughs> so you can absolutely be right that technology is not going anywhere, or that technology is leaving, or that Facebook's a fad, or that, or that Instagram's only a blip, or that technology is too hard. I spoke yesterday at an event, and I had this lady come up to me, and she said, I totally understand what you think, but I just I can't do technology. I said, really? And she was 65 years old. She was, technology sucks. I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too, it's too overwhelming. I don't know what to do. I'm out. I said, oh my gosh, can you do me a favor? I said, can you, can you quick? I said, do you have a cell phone? She said, yeah, of course. I said, can you quickly send me a text real quick? I just want to make sure that we stay in touch and I didn't bring my phone. 
She's like, oh yeah. So she pulls out her smartphone and she's like giving it a text. And I said, now let me ask you a question. When you were a kid, how did you make a phone call? And she looked at me kind of funny and she says, what do you mean? I said, well, how, how did you make a phone call? And she says, well, I had to pick up the phone and do that, di that rotary dial thing. And I said, so let me get this straight. So you went from a piece of technology where you just picked up some big thing, stuck it to your ear and dialed, to now you're sending me a message from space. Right? And she went, oh. Right? It was the first time that she realized that she actually lived and breathed technology. She's just been tricked into using technology and not making it hard. Right? Do you guys see, do you guys see that? I mean, I, I w it's funny. I did a presentation in Dallas, and I asked this question. I said, how many of you are scared of technology? And the whole room raised their hand. And then I said, how many of you watch TV commercials? And nobody raised their hand. And I said, why are you guys not raising your hands? They're like, Oh, well, here in Dallas, we have blah, 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 whatever cable company it is, and we have DVR, and we just skip through the commercials. I said, so wait, let me get this straight. You went from turning the channel on a television with your fingers on a knob going from UHF to VHF merely, you know, 10 years ago, to now you are sending an infrared programmed remote to a DVR to skip through commercials. Technology is not hard. It's just the gap from being able to know about it to implementing it that can get us sometimes in a block. And so, so today what I want to be able to do is I want to take something as powerful as writing a blog post and we're going to walk through and make it easy. So you can see it, breathe it, live it. And at the end, I'm going to show you a platform that if you have a bunch of content or you want to write content, and at the end of the day, if you don't have a website yet and you haven't talked to David about a website, this is a great place to start to put it. Okay, everything leads back to your website, but it'll be um, a, a, a cool platform for you. Fair enough. Okay, so here's the deal. At the end of the day, I used to jump around on stage and I used to say, "Connectivity is today's new currency." Right? How many people you're connected to? Right? How many fans do you have? Is the main purpose of how connect uh, uh, is the currency of today? However, the reality is that digital collaboration is actually today's new currency. So I want, to talk about, I want to talk about that just for a second. Do you think it is more valuable for you to schedule some posts on Facebook? Right now, now I, let me say this. I'm a huge social media guy. I teach social media. I train social media. I have a social media agency. However, what I know about social media is no matter how dedicated you are to it, how much time you spend on it, how you hire assistants to do it, how you put together programs, how you put together schedules, all that jazz, at the end of the day, your message lasts for about 10 minutes. Right? It's about a 10 minute, a 10 minute message. If you're really good, that 10 minute message will be seen by a lot of people, but it's still gone in 10 minutes. So what we're going to talk about today is taking, taking and creating a digital asset that then we can promote using social media, but that the asset is where we want to spend the time creating it so that we can get a return on our investment inside that asset and keep promoting that same asset using the law of multiplicity. Does that make sense? Have I lost anybody yet? We haven't got started yet. Did I lose you back there? What? <laughs> Speak up. Hey, here's the thing. I know you guys, as I know, you know as speakers, that, that people will always, a confused mind will say no, right? So it's our job as speakers to make sure that the loop is closed. I know that if I say something that doesn't make sense to you, you are out until I, um, until I re reconfirm and bring it back. So may I, may I ask your permission? Well, I'll give you permission that if I open a loop and it doesn't close and you're like, I don't know what the heck this guy's talking about, I need you to raise your hand and blurt it out and tell me and just stop me. Because this is a conversation. Right? Is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah. It's nine. I'll just keep drinking an energy drink, and it will be you guys that will be sorry by the end of this. I get drinking. Well, that front came out wrong. That'll be what they use in the sizzle reel, right? Some yahoo from the front of the room. Keep drinking. <laughs> so we're going to talk today about creating digital assets. 
And I know David has only talked a little bit about the digital magazines that, that, that these guys do. Great space, right? This is about creating an asset one time and using it over and over and over again. Okay? And as speakers in the room, if you can master this technique and this approach, you will not be having the conversation with your friends and family, oh my gosh, you know what I need? I just need to be put on bigger stages. I just need to be put on stages. That's my favorite thing. Do you understand that for a promoter to put you on stage is actually a really big risk? Do you guys, can you guys see this? Let me, let me just, this is kind of the presentation in the presentation now. And the quieter you get, the more times I'll just ask for participation. So here's the deal. If you want to get on more stages, you have to figure out how to prove to the promoter that you're an asset to the, to the event rather than a liability. Right? You have to figure out, are you an asset to, am I an asset to this event? Right? So when David's picking speakers and picking presenters, he knows that if he puts up somebody he's never seen, never heard, doesn't, can't sell anything, doesn't want to sell anything, is bad material, contradicts his material, gives a wrong message, maybe they, what if they got up and said, oh, PR firms are stupid? That would be a bad afternoon, <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially for Caitlin. So, um, so a promoter needs to feel comfortable having you in front of their audience. They, David worked his butt off to have all of you here. It's my job to enhance that and bring folks in as well. So we've done a huge marketing campaign for this. We've promoted this event. We promote him. We promote David. We promote LCO. We promote. We do, I do enough to promote David throughout the course of the year. That, let's be honest. Well, he probably hasn't said this, so I'll, I'll, I'll back this up. There are promoters that it is more risky for them not to bring me on their stage than it is to have me on stage. Because the amount of marketing and um, push that I'll, that I'll give some event. Right? So you build a big list and you promote other people. You promote events. You create fans. You create those fans. Those fans then turn into buyers later. Does that make sense? Gang, you guys are a quiet group. Maria's over here going, okay, when's this, gonna, when's this party going to start? When's this party going to start? So here's the deal. This is the new digital business model. I used to go to networking events all the time. By a show of hands, how many of you absolutely dig and love, absolutely can't get more excited to get up and go to a networking event? Look around. <laughs> you love it? Yeah. You just love it? I live in Palm Springs. I need to get out. Yeah, you do need to get out. But it's so hot, right? Oh, there's way more than that. <laughs> so here's the thing. So look, here's the deal. We have one person in the room that gets, gets ga jazzed about networking events, right? The only thing I want to do when I go to a networking event is figure out how to never go back. <laughs> right? Because the reality is, if you think about what occurs at a networking event, you've got all these people that get up, put their face on, get in their car, deal with traffic, go to the event, and then they get so excited because they stand there and they go, ooh, I get to stand up and tell everybody what I do. Right, a 60 second commercial. And then you, have, you basically have 100 people hawking 150 products to 150 people that don't want to even be there in the first place and aren't there to buy anything because they're there to sell their 150 products, the same 150 people that aren't buying anything. Meanwhile, you do get to enjoy the cheese cubes and the Triscuits and the bad wine in the back of the room if it's a good event. <laughs> right? So when I go to a networking event, I'm only there for one reason, and that's to figure out how to find the most influential people in the room and to figure out how to serve them, give them value, so that I can build a relationship with them. Right? Did David talk about ICE yesterday? Would you make more money if you have more influence, more credibility, and more exposure? Right? So we're playing right on that, right? So when I go to a networking event, when they give me a chance to talk for 60 seconds, I find the most influential person in the room, and I spend my entire 60 seconds doing nothing but promoting them from the front of the room. I go to an event. Maria knows this. I don't take business cards. I don't ever tell people what I do. I have no interest. No one's there to buy anything. So I just position myself as a seller and somebody that's there to add value, add value or as a buyer. I'm sorry. I position my, that was wrong. I position myself as a buyer. Now all of a sudden, everybody wants to talk to me because they're selling me their stuff. And in my mind, I'm auditioning them to figure out who's the influencers in the room. Okay, and we'll 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 get a little bit in we'll get a little bit into that. So this is a new digital business model. You've got to be able to communicate, collaborate, publish, share, 
and learn. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about all of those uh, all those coming up. When we talk about a digital asset, I want you to think about if you have a, a blog post, right? Is everybody familiar with the word blog? Okay, it just as an article, okay, um, well, article or a video. Well, if we stick that on the internet somewhere, Google, Yahoo, Bing comes and finds it and goes, "Ooh, this is really good." So, um, so that if somebody's searching for best tacos in Los Angeles, the search engine's job is to deliver to that consumer the closest match and the best potential for them to hit best tacos in Los Angeles. So all we want to do is when somebody types that in, we want to, we want to show up, right? That's all we want to do. We want to show up. And so we're going to talk about that today in digital asset creation throughout the, throughout the entire internet. So, for example, if you, go and, if you go and Google me, I own the first 110 pages of Google for my name. Now, I don't say that because I'm some fancy content creator. I'm just very keen on the fact that I could do high leveraged activities and create an asset one time, create an article one time, create a video one time, create a, a, a picture of, of me with my arm around somebody of influence one time, take that drop it into some place that the internet loves or that the search engines love, and from there, I get seen. And watch this. Let me ask this. How many of you, ha in the last 12 months, let me just prove the point of how potent the internet is here. How many of you, in the last 12 months, have become a new customer of something because you saw a marketing message on a billboard? You did? What was the product? On a billboard. OK? How about from a radio spot? Look around. You have? What was the product? What? Some vitamin. Some vitamin or something. OK. <laughs> Television. OK. What was the product? New customer. <laughs> if there's two. What? P90X. OK. And that was the very first. <laughs> okay, what about, news, what about newspaper? Exactly, magazine. No, it's perfect, magazine. Does anybody remember what the yellow pages are? Threw mine, Threw mine away yesterday. What's that? I assure you the 15-year-olds don't have a clue what a yellow pages is. Right now, even online, they don't even go by yellowpages.com anymore. Now it's yp.com. Right? Because they're trying to appeal to the 15-year-olds that they can't figure out how to, they're like, why P? That's not YOLO. Right? By the way, I figured I had to call my nephew and ask what YOLO meant. Have you guys seen this? Everybody's now talking about YOLO, Y-O-L-O. Do you only live once? So if you see that on Facebook, that's what it, that's what it means. Um, so here's the deal. Do you know what they teach you if you go to school and you go to college for marketing? How to use marketing in radio, TV, magazines, newspaper, yellow pages. Yet you just all told me that you don't buy that way. I would rather take my marketing cues from audiences than what some marketing yahoo is going to tell me that went to school to learn how to market using billboards, TV, radio, so on and so forth. Right? Hey, come on in. But, what I, but, but let me ask this. How many of you have bought something on the internet in the last 12 months? Raise your hands. Right? Look, look around the room. This is the biggest participation we've had all morning. Right? Now let me ask this. How many of you generate leads online? About a third of you. How many of you sell stuff online? Three at five, we'll call, it, we'll call that half. So let me get this straight. You guys all say you buy stuff online, and only a half to a third of you are really capitalizing on the internet for your messaging to generate true leads and opportunities for your business. Right? Yet, Today's marketplace, we buy stuff on the internet. We may go look in a store, but the reality is we, we buy stuff on the internet. This is a sign of the times. I actually read an article where Best Buy is trying to figure out how to scramble cell phones inside their stores. Do you know why? Because people go to Best Buy, touch it, pick it, click around on the dial, pick it up, touch it. And then on their phone, they go to Amazon or to the store, and they buy it right from their cell phone. It's, we've now gotten to a point where people are going to stores to not buy stuff so that stuff can buy on the internet. It can show up at their house. They don't have to lug a TV into the back of their car. UPS drops it off, and it's a done deal. 
Does this make sense? We have to put our mindset in. We got to go where the customers are and where the people are. Right? It's a high trust item when somebody takes their credit card out and puts in their 16 digits and an expiration date. But we are tuned to be able to do that online much better than we are at a live event or driving down the road going, oh, look at that billboard. Or you're even doing it with your cell phone. I mean, I literally in SkyMall Magazine, which is that, that magazine of expensive crap that you see on airplanes all the time, if you start looking now, the ads are getting smart that say, take out your cell phone and take a picture of this ad. Right? I actually thought that was fairly genius. Now they're actually giving us a call to action right inside of an, uh, their own ad. Hey, we know you're not going to buy this, so just take a picture of it so we hope that you'll remember it later when you're in traffic and you're scrolling through your pictures. I actually thought that that is the law of multiplicity happening right there. Does that make sense? So we're going to talk about each of these different spaces. So people always ask, well, I don't know what to write about. I would do blog posts or I would write an article, but I don't even know what to write about, right? Dave is going to talk a little bit later about the digital magazines and the articles and the stuff that they do for their clients. And what David provides is an amazing platform for you to be able to communicate your message and be in front of your potential audience. So I hear all the time, I never know what to talk about. I never know what to say. So let's, let's give you some ideas. And we'll, 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 um, we'll engage in a conversation about this. So interviewing others, right? Remember I said I go to networking events to never go back? This is the most valuable tool I know of. It's a little flip cam. I actually think it's so old they don't even make them anymore, right? But you, they've got zips now, or 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 what's the what's the one you got? What do you recommend, Dave? It matters, but it's for the camera on your phone. The camera on your phone, the right? You have with you is more valuable. Exactly. The camera you have is the one if you use it is your best tool. So when I go to a networking event, here's what I do. I find the five influential people in the room. They're always the same five people. And if you can just hone down on figuring out how to get with the five influencers in the room, just by rubbing shoulders with them, you're going to have more influence. You're going to have more credibility, and you're going to get more exposure. Right? So here are the five people. The first person I always want to get to know at any event I go to is the speaker. Why? Front of the room? Everyone knows them. I'm influential. They're influential. They would be one of the most influential. They have a lot of exposure on the internet. If I just tell you that I own the first 110 pages of Google for my name, would it be of value to you to, when somebody Googles my name, to have you show up number two? Yeah? Right? Here's the reality. The reason I get to know the speaker is, let me give you an example. This is Jordan back here. She owns her own company called HireAteenToday.com. And she and a group of like-minded entrepreneurial young, young folk uh, have a, a virtual assistant business. And they can do everything. I literally brought a bunch of business cards down today. She's going to input them into my Infusionsoft account. And she's going to help me get all those business cards loaded up, sent out, so on and so forth. They and their group of, their group of uh, we'll call them employees, although they're under 18, so I'm going to just call them employees, um, can help you do a ton of stuff and get out of admin overwhelm. Hireateentoday.com. OK, now I want you to stop what you're doing right now. Freeze. Everyone just freeze for a second. No, no, no. You guys, if, if you could see what I just saw, over half of the room took out their pens. And when I said hireateentoday.com, Larry took out their notes to write hireateentoday.com. Let me ask you this. Is it in Jordan's best interest to know who I am? Yes, because I just promoted her and her entire company to a room full of people. So if you can align yourself with the speakers and then you come to the audience and you sit in the audience, there's a very high likelihood that a speaker is going to use people in the audience as, a present, as part of the presentation. I assure you. She's getting more publicity out of me standing over here talking about HireTeamToday.com than she'll be able to do by talking to each of you individually. I want to be that guy, right? So the speaker, organizers, the, spe the people that organize the event, why would we want to get to know them? They organize the, other events. They organize other events? 
They could be getting you to speak at other events. How about this? They know everybody in the room. They know who's sleeping with who. They know who slept with who. They know whose credit card bounces. They know who's good. They know who's bad. They know who's in the room of influence. So while most people will go to a networking event with the goal of passing out 50 business cards, I go, I want to know the influencers in the room. These people know, I, I get to an event early, I'm schlepping boxes, right? I have schlepped more boxes in and out of events while all, the, all of my other speaker friends are trying to act all pompous and putting on their jackets and sitting in the back of the room and thinking they're all, you know, badass. And at the end of the day, um, I'm the guy schlepping in boxes and you know what? The organizers absolutely love me. So when I say to them, hey, you know what? Who's, got, who's like got it really going on? Or who, who's, my best referral is blank. I can say to them, hey, who's, who's the best referral? And they will put me right in touch with those pers that person. It's efficient. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Next up are the, the three biggest yap jobs in the room. Yap job number one, yap job number two, and yap job number three. Why? You all know the yap jobs, right? I mean, I'm a total yap job. The sneezers, the, they're the loud ones, they're the obnoxious ones, they're the ones that are making the most noise, they're the class clowns. You'll know them, they won't ever be talking to each other because God forbid the spotlight's on two of them at the same time. So do you know who these people are, right? Why would you want to get to know them? Bingo. Everybody else knows, knows who they are as well. This is just a game of multiplicity. When David asked, would you, have, would you make more money if you had more influence? If you don't have the influence, you want to rub up against and next to the people of influence. Does that make sense? OK. So you can interview others. You can promote others. Like I said, when I go to a networking event, I'm always promoting others. The funny thing is, is I have a product back there called 147 Ways to Generate Leads for Your Business, dot, 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 how to have more leads in time. You know what the number one complaint I get on that CD is? And we've sold 10,000 of these things. Gosh, you know what? I really wish I would have known you when I recorded that because all you do in there is you promote so many other people. Hi, come on in. How are you? I love your necklace. Come on in. Come on in. Um, so I promote others. When I'm in, and here's the thing. So when I recorded that, do you think I was strategic in who I promoted inside of that? Of course. You know who I promoted? The event promoters that are going to hire me to bring me on stage. And then you know what I did? I sent them all a free copy. Because there's nothing more important to somebody else than the sound of their name. So you can promote others all day long, and you'll never get in trouble, unless you're promoting not good people. Right? So you can promote others. You can do reviews, right? Last night, I went home, and David's book, Cracking the Icon Code, I think is one of the best written books I've ever read on business. So I, I literally went, went home yesterday, got on Amazon, left him an amazing review on Amazon. Then not only that, because I wanted him to see it, I took that Amazon review, and I posted it on my Facebook page. And on his. What? And on his. And on his. I tagged him in the post. Because I know that he's going to check his Facebook. That's how I use social media. I'll promote someone else. I'll tag them to make sure that they know that I'm promoting them. And away we rock. Does that make sense? So promote others. How to. These are all blog post ideas as well. How to do blank. Right? Silly thing. I use the same. If you're a speaker. Oh, I didn't bring mine in here. Um, if you're a speaker and you travel a lot, you'll, you, you'll break headsets very easily. Because you, you, you know, they're in your pocket. They're in your briefcase or whatever. So I got a, 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 a new set from Amazon. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see if this will work. So I flipped on my video camera on my, phone, on my computer. And I did a 3 minute and 20 second video reviewing why I like this set of headphones. Slapped it into a blog with a picture, a video, a little testimonial of why I liked it, and my Amazon link for the stupid set of headphones. I let that go and sit. It's done. I now sell two to three sets of those stupid headphones every month via Amazon. Now, I do make about $6 a, a, $6 a month. But it's the concept. I'm reviewing something. People like to know what other people think about certain products. I recommend David's book. Okay? How to. How to use the headsets. When you buy stuff from Amazon, 
pick up, put your camera on, talk about how to use it. How does it arrive? You know, because some of these headsets, I say in there, hey, if you want to give a gift, this would make a great gift. Here's how the box looks when it arrives. I literally open it up, right? And that, that asset, can you guys see that that one blog post, that review of those headsets sitting on a blog somewhere will continue to drive traffic over and over and over again back to Amazon making sales for me while I'm sitting here talking? Does that make sense? Yes. That is on DNet, which is our which is our community blog. But you can use a way if you have a WordPress blog or a website, you can just put them right inside there. Okay. Yes. From because in Amazon you can sign up for being an affiliate, which basically just means you sell other people's stuff. You play hot potato. You generate a lead. You hot potato the lead over to the organization. Let them sell it, and you take a slice out the center. That that makes sense. Okay, how many of you would like to get some of your time back, right now, right? Because everybody says I don't have enough time and I don't have enough cash, oh, I put years. right? <laughs> For years, right? So let me so let me ask this: How many of you, by a show of hands, get sick and tired of answering the same questions over and over and over and over and over in your business? How much is it? What does it do? What's your warranty? How do I sign up? Where do I go? What do I do? How many of you? Raise hands. Let me erase that for you right now and give you your time back. Go write a blog post or do videos and, and write down your 10 most frequently asked questions. And then the next one is the 10 questions that people should ask, that you wish they'd ask, that if they were more informed by the time they called you, you would, you would be better off. You do a blog post on that. Maybe you ask video and you tape videotape one at a time. Now when somebody calls you with questions, you go, hey, you know what? Let me pop you off this quick video. It'll answer all that question for you. And now you're no longer sitting there answering questions. You're using, again, the law of multiplicity to take one message and use it over and over and over again, giving you freeing up your time to do what? Go create more content. The more content. Here's the deal. Back in the day when Al Gore invented the internet, <laughs> there were only a few people using it. There were, only, there were tens of millions of pages on the internet. Now we have trillions of pages. We have to start working together, collaborating together, and taking up as much digital space as possible because we are about to enter an age where 15-year-olds are producing content over and over and over again. Why they understand that they buy stuff on the internet, they want to advertise, market, play, communicate, connect, all on the internet. Does that make sense? If we have blank stares, I'm going to be nervous. OK, so collaboration is a huge, huge thing. Here's the deal. I just want to come up number two, right? So if, in the search engine. So let me, let me give you an example. The best asset creation that you can do is a very simple formula. This is a very, very easy formula. It's you plus some type of camera plus a person of influence creates a digital asset. And again, let me, let me talk to you as a speaker now. One of the things that I do at every event is I will go to the promoter after the event, and I will say, hey, can I have you do a quick 30-second review from a promoter to a promoter of why you should bring me on stage? And, and they all will give me a testimonial so that when somebody says, hey, I'm thinking about hiring you for an event, you know what I do? Hey, let me send you this playlist that's set up in YouTube of all the promoters that I've worked with. Now, I don't have to do the talking. I let David do the talking. Third party validation is going to be far more valid than me saying, hire me, I'm great. So the reason I brought my flip cam is I'm going to have David, by the end of today, hopefully, if I do a good job, he will say, I will give you a testimonial at talking from promoter to promoter. Now, the other thing that that does is I want David to be on the same level as other promoters. I want to be able to promote him. So I'll start off by going, hey, I just finished this amazing event. This was one of the best audiences I've ever been around, blah, blah, blah. David, tell me a little bit about what it was like to have me on stage. Okay. Now, this video is so important. When I go to an event, do you know what the biggest asset that I'm going to take away from today's presentation is? Video. 
here's the deal, right? We, we have the video being taken back here. When I talked to David about this event, the number one thing that I said over and over and over again was, I need to make sure that I have access to the video when we're done. Right? Because as a speaker, we all say, hey, I've got to get on more stages. Right? That's, what, that's our famous line that we say. Right? But here's the reality. Let's call, this, let's call this 30 people, 40 people. Right? Is it possible that this video, when we're done, done properly in YouTube, optimized or just given some keywords in YouTube, and taken and dropped into a blog post that says, hey, this was a great event I did at the Icon Mi Mindset and Marketing Workshop with David Fagan, uh, owner of LCO. Here's who was in attendance. Here's what I got out of the event. I wrote that as a blog post, and I put that in a blog somewhere. Is it possible over the next 60 years that that video will be seen by more than 40 people in the room? Absolutely. So when we're out speaking, don't get so focused on, is it a big room, is it a small room, is there a lot of people in the room? Your number one focus should be making sure that the thing is videotaped. If there's not a video camera, I actually, tra I actually hire a guy that does nothing. His job is to travel with me and videotape me everywhere I go. Because that's where, that's where people are, are, are seeing and watching and participating and learning about me, online, watching a video. Right? Does this make sense? Is this kind of giving you a little bit of a mindset shift in that it's, it, we've got to focus in where our customers are? <coughs> OK? So that's the, di that's the digital asset. Next, publishing. WordPress is the best at the moment. OK? Now, that may change. But um, you need a blog or a website. Now, is it absolutely imperative like your business is going to crash if you don't have one? Eventually, right? But the days of slapping up a brochure website, nobody cares. Nobody cares to go to your website and see and read all about you and why you're great. Think about it. And all I have to do is put yourself in the reverse. If you go to your own website, are you there to buy something? Are you there checking something out? Look, here's the deal, folks. Business is being done in one of two ways today. Internet and word of mouth referral. And word of mouth referrals are being validated on the internet. And let, me give you an, let me give you an example just to, just to prove my point. What was your name? Roya. Roya? OK. So Roya moves to Los Angeles. She, um, she moves from New York, right? Roya gets recruited. She moves to Los Angeles. And she calls me and she says, Casey, oh my gosh. I know you are the most networked person in Los Angeles. You have got to know everybody in LA. Um, I need a good OBGYN. Okay? And I take out my trusty Rolodex or my smartphone and I peel her off two or three referrals of amazing OBGYNs in, in Los Angeles. The likelihood that she's going to just go and call one of them, show up at their office, and let a doctor play with her lady bits because I gave a referral <laughs> is very unlikely. What Roy is more likely to do is take that and go Google them. And when she goes and Googles them, if she doesn't find anything about them, she's going to bump into somebody that's written some articles, makes her feel comfortable, builds her trust. She sees pictures of, of the office. Now, all of a sudden, a new OBGYN has entered the picture. Roya has now just taken my OBGYN, my referral, out of the, out of the equation. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So the reality is the question is not how much business am I getting from word of mouth referrals. The real question is how much business am I losing from word of mouth referrals with the lack of a digital footprint. This is so important. I, I, I was telling David that I twisted my hip. Uh, I twisted my hip. Uh, I wish I had a better story, but playing golf at a stupid golf and fun stuff place or whatever. And I'm in excruciating pain. My best friend's a surgeon in New York. I called him yesterday, and I said, hey, I need a good orthopedic doctor to go check out, check out my hip. He gave me two names. He said, go Google them. You'll find all you want about them. I went and Googled both of them. One of them had a great digital footprint. He, he contributed articles. He's writing videos. He's talking about sports injuries. He had a really good footprint. The other guy had a standard replicated website brought to you by Providence Medical Center that was just a profile. Who got, who got the business? The guy I felt comfortable with. Because online, he taught me. He made me feel comfortable. I knew he had to be more credible because he's writing articles for all these places. Does that make sense? We just got to be that, that asset creator. 
OK? So this is the simple formula for creating a blog post. And I'm just going to stick with blog posts for a moment. So here it is. Featured image, which is just a picture. We like pictures. People love pictures, right? And they're indexed by Google. Google loves pictures, OK? Next up is video. I almost always will have a video in my blog post. Why? People love video. People want to take content and information in via video. Does that make sense? How many of you in here are video watchers? About half of you. Any of you hate videos and you just read text? A couple of you? OK. My assistant hates video. She will not sit through a video to save her life. She wants it bullet pointed in a text format so she can scan it, get the information, and get out. She doesn't want to sit and watch a 20-minute video of me trying to think I'm funny. <laughs> right? So you add video for people, and you add text for robots. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, well that, well, that sounded bad. Let me explain. <laughs> I did not mean to call. <laughs> and this is what's going to be titled in the video, Casey insults people. No, I mean robots, uh, search engine, spiders. Right? Spiders cannot crawl a video. And spiders just means Google and Yahoo and Bing and all those guys, they send these little robots out to read everything on your, on, your, on your blog or your website. And then they put that into an algorithm. And then that helps drive how many people get to see your content. That's all, that's all that really means. And all we want to do is give those spiders or the robots what they want to deliver our message in front of the person that's typing in best tacos in Los Angeles, best surf shop. Right? Now here's the thing. The robots like three things in a website. Current, is it a current website, meaning how often is it updated? If you have a website that you have not updated in the past two years, you better get on the phone with a 15-year-old or David. I would recommend David because he's up on the technology. But you need, your website's a, a waste. It, it's, I, and I don't, I don't say that to be mean. I'm just trying to be very realistic. Nobody goes to your website to hear about your About Us section about how you give excellent customer service. Nobody cares. And all I have to do is say, how many websites do you go to and buy because somebody wrote an About Us section on how great their customer service is? In today's marketplace, if you don't have great customer service, you're out anyways. So it's kind of, it's kind of a moot point. Does that make sense? I've lost my clicker. I'm all kinds of a mess. Um, and then the, the final thing that I always add that I think is the most important piece of the blog post is some type of Call to action. Visit my Facebook page. I use a lead capture form, and I'll come right back to you, Maria. Um, I use a, a CRM system so that when somebody fills in their information, it comes to me and it says, hey, this person raised their hand and wants to talk to you about booking you at an event. This person is interested in, in, in hiring you to come speak on the Jimmy Kimmel show. This person is, is interested in it's Jet Jump, Jump Jet. Jump Jet, that's a great name. That's a great brand, actually. Unless you're thinking of like emergency jets and then you've got to jump back. It was, um, but think about this. If they do tons of video content about showing the pictures of their jet, the interiors of the jet, why the experience that somebody's going to have from Jump Jet is going to outperform their experience at, um, you know, what's one of their competitors? FlexJet? Jet NetJet, one of those, right? If I'm in the space that I'm going to take a private jet somewhere, if I go research jump jet and I don't find anything, and I find their competitor, and their competitor is showing me better pictures, and I'm, I mean, that's expensive to fly private. Right? It's like, you know, five grand or 10 grand just to go to Vegas. You're going to have to give me that experience online so that I take my 16 digits and my expiration date out and I plug it into the computer. So I always have a place for people to tell me, hey, I'm interested. So if you don't have that, it can be something as simple as click here, visit my website, visit my, visit my Facebook page. And then once this post is, is done and created, right? once it's done and created, then you can use your social media marketing to drive people back to see this. Because this becomes a, per, a, 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 a permanent asset versus a social media post, which is a short-term asset. Yes? 
a customer relationship management system. So it's just a way for you to track leads coming into your business. Right? Some people will use Infusionsoft. I use Infusionsoft. I use a CRM system called Mothernode. But um, you, eventually, you will want a CRM system. It tracks your business from start to finish. Right? So if somebody comes in as a lead to my business, I am not interested in just building an email list. Right? And I know all these speakers, and I'm friends with them, but will say he or she with the biggest list wins. I disagree with that. He or she who has the most influence over their list will win. If you provide value and content to your list, they will stay, they will love you, they will eventually go from the fan, or as David goes, from prospect to suspect. Has he gone through that yet with you guys? The prospect, suspect? He has not? Okay. You'll, hear, you'll probably hear that this afternoon. So, um, But I always have a lead capture form, something attached to that blog post. And, if you guys, and I'll tell you this. If you guys want my slides, too, I'll give you my slides. Um, if you put them on, on, online and you want to steal them, that's totally cool with me. I don't care. Just credit me and link it back to my No, I'm just talking. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you this. If, you were, if, if, if I were in your shoes, what I would be doing when someone like David says you can have my PowerPoint slide, what I would do is I would get him to do a, a quick interview on video talking about the slides. I would say, hey, can I post one of those slides on, on a blog post? Rick this morning gave me a slide from each of the presenters yesterday that he wants. Right? If I were Rick, by the way, this is one of the most amazing audiovisual guys on the planet. Rick, Rick and I have worked together many, many times. He's awesome. If you guys are doing meetings or events, you got to talk to Rick. Okay? So Rick this morning sat down and I said, okay, quick, give me, give me what happened yesterday. What did you take away? And he, he, he both from David and from Mark told me about a slide in each of their presentation. So think about the power for Mark as an AV guy who wants to work at events. He wants to work at David's events, right? Can we say that? He wants to maybe work at Mark Maloon events, right? So because Rick told me about a slide of David's that he wants, here's if I were Rick, what I would do at break time, I would say, hey, David. Get over here. Can I do a quick interview you about the slide that you used with the infinity, the double infinity side? And I want to see if I can use that slide in a blog post talking about you. And I want you to explain that slide on video. He then takes that featured image, which is the slide, the video of David talking about the slide, the text talking about why he liked the slide, and then finally a note that says, hey, if you want to talk to me more about how I can provide audiovisual equipment to your event, or if you'd like to be put in touch with David and his organization for a website review, get in touch with me. Fill in this form here. And puts that up. Is that not powerful, if you think about it? Very. It's very powerful. And at the end of the day, you know who he's playing to? People with the video, robots with the text, the promoter in the back of the room, the person that's probably in this entire room has the most influence, credibility, and exposure. So that when somebody types in David Fagan or Icon Media or Icon Builder or Icon Magazine or Keynote Magazine or LCO or Michael Levine or any of those, he comes up when you look up David. He's riding on the coattails of David's exposure online. Does that make sense? And here's the best part. If he does it right, and he truly doesn't come from a just buy from me, buy from me, and he's really promoting David, he could actually take that link from that blog post, send it to David, and say, hey, David, I just, I, this is the blog post I wrote on you. If you like it, shoot it out to your friends. Is he likely to send that blog post out if it's a third party saying how awesome he is talking about one of his slides? Absolutely. Now, if Rick wants to take that to the next level, and, I will. and he will, I'm training him because he's part of DNet, so he's getting, he's, getting this, the, he's getting this super duper training here. But at the end of the day, David probably has an affiliate program, which means that if you send leads to David's organization, he will pay you. So here's how my brain works. Here we got Rick, who wants to work with David and do events. If he did that post, picture of the slide, video, of David talking about the slide, the text of why he liked the slide and liked the icon mindset mastery course, 
put in a web form and said, hey, if you want to talk, find out more about David, click here. And he put his affiliate link. Now that asset can be producing sales for Rick and David over and over and over again. And once it's done and up, he doesn't have to do anything about, else about it. Now he can take that content and he can put it into a bot, uh, another, put it on his website, put it on his blog. He can take the, the video of that, put it on YouTube. He could take that video. He could send it out as a video mail to somebody saying, hey, uh, I, my buddy David was talking about the infinity energy thing. I, I just wanted to show you the quick video I shot with him. Send it out. It now is customizing that message, personalizing that message for the people. It's doing everything that David's talking about this weekend. Does that make sense? So can I show you guys an, ex an actual example so you can actually see a blog post as I do it? Yeah. You don't have a choice, but um, <laughs> so here's what I've done. I've taken a blog post, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain this. I'll take a, this blog post, and I'm going to break this down exactly what I did. Do I have like 15 left? Yes, no? Oh, I'm OK, I'm behind. OK, so we'll go quick. So here it is. This is a picture I did of my buddy Jim Fortin. Here's a video of me interviewing Jim Fortin about his program or his success. I wrote a bunch of text about the video. I had to cut it off just because of the slide. So here's the end of that. Here's the web form. Here, here's that being sent out. If you fill out that web form, you know what happens? You get sent to his, his buy page, and I make a commission off of that. So cool thing, I go on a cruise. I come back, 24 people had filled out the form. 11 people bought. That gave us 13 people that didn't buy. We were titillating enough in the video and the text to get them to fill out the form, but they didn't buy. So you know what we did? We called them. It was so spectacular, right? We called them and asked why they didn't buy. After that conversation, we picked up another 11 sales. So, so being able to have those leads that are actually interested in what you're selling is fantastic, OK? Next up, you've got to be able to share it on social media. In DNet, we actually have a program where when you post a blog, um, you can actually leave a comment that posts right to your Facebook page. And then you just click this Change button, and you can change it to actually leave a, a comment from your Facebook fan page, which gives you extra added oomph when those blog posts get picked up by Google. OK? So let me ask this. Since we're coming, we're coming to the close, right? We've talked about the power of Google. We've talked about the digital asset ROI. How many leads and opportunities can that piece of asset contain over and over and over and over and over again? New way of networking, go to a networking event. And instead of trying to sell your crap, get the people of influence on video so that you can promote them on the internet where people are looking for their stuff. Right? Does that make sense? You'll all do that? It's like, oh, I just, he's almost done. David told him he's almost done. Now I'm just waiting to see what's next. <laughs> right? Basic SEO, we didn't, really, we, didn't really cover on, we didn't really cover SEO, but if you do enough text and you're talking about people in that text, search engines love that. SEO is just a fancy way of saying, give the search engine robots what they want. Okay? And you can spend a ton of money, or you can talk to someone like David, have him put a website together for you that actually is SEO'd already, optimized for the robots already. Does that make sense? Yes? 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 yes. Okay. Um, have I earned the right to spend five minutes with you and tell you about DNet and what we do? Yes. First of all, let me ask, was this helpful? Yes. Yes. Okay. Have I earned the right to tell you about DNet for five minutes? Yes. Yes. I'm stealing a page out of David. David is so great about earning the right and asking your permission to earn the right. So I want to tell you a little bit about DNet. It's like five minutes. Cool? Again, you don't have a choice because you all said yes. <laughs> okay. So DNet is a... A, a, a collaborative network of community asset creators, which basically is a fancy way of saying we're a big network of people that understand that we are more powerful as a group than we are individually. So we have a community blog where you can post unlimited content to that blog. So if you're creating content for your own blog, you can repurpose it right on ours. If you want to create new content, you drop it right in, right in ours. We use a WordPress format. It's everybody communicating because we are more powerful. A group of us, remember I said that the search engines love it, how current and relevant and stuff your website is? Well, if your website hasn't been updated in two years, and our, our website has 50 new blog posts coming out every single day, what's more current to the search engines? We are. So we are a very powerful, powerful tool. 
We're a collaborative network, which just means that we have a lot of people in our network that do videos with each other. They'll jump on a Google Hangout. They'll interview you and I on a Google Hangout together. And then we both post that. So now we've got two, two blog posts going with the same video. And they collaborate with each other. They talk to each other's networks. Okay? We have several TV shows and radio shows and podcast shows of people inside the network. And coming into our network, you have access to be a guest on those, on those shows and have that content get pushed out through our medium. We have niche communities, which means we launch different satellite sites for different niches that you have access to. A lot of our, our, a lot of our members will pay a referral fee or an affiliate fee if you help sell their stuff. So if David's part of our network, um, we can get together. If I pass David business, he's going to pay me. If I pa he passes me business, I'm going to pay him. Sounds absolutely stupid. I know nothing about credit card processing, but we have a guy in our network that offers 20% of recurring credit card processing fees for anybody you send him. I send that dude more credit card business than I know what to do with. Why? Because I get a check every month. So now I can start promoting and selling other people's stuff just by helping out writing good content about them and their business. I'm promoting them on their, uh, on their website. Okay. Generate unlimited leads and referrals because the blog posts are always going to have calls to action on them. And that's going to help drive leads. Uh, hugely important, not talking too deep on SEO, but we have a site that is very rich. So our backlinks, meaning a link that comes from our site to your site, is very valuable. And the search engines absolutely love that because that we, are, we are a trusted uh, website. And then we have a collaborative sharing um, environment. So everybody comes in. Everybody's there to help each other out. We have training and education. So we actually walk you through and teach you and train you and, and all that jazz. So um, at the beginning, I said it was going to be 40 bucks, right? So it's still 40 bucks. Will you, will you hand out those sheets, please? Um, so here's the deal. It's very simple. It's 40 bucks a month to be a part of our network. That's it. There's no contract, so you don't like it? Go. I'm easy. Okay? <laughs> don't tell anyone. Um, but it's, it's 40 bucks a month. And the reason we did that is we wanted to make the price low enough to bring the masses in because the masses create more content. The more content the site has, the more powerful it comes for the whole network. Okay? And then we have, we, have one other, we have one other program. If you're like, you know what? I understand the power of this. I want to save a little bit of money. So here's what I did. I just took and made it $397 if you want to come in for a year and just do it all at one, all at one spot. Okay? If you come in at $397 for the year, um, what, here's what you're going to get. You're also going to get a couple of bonuses. You're going to get a copy of my 147 product. And at David's events, and, and when I used to sell this from the front of the stage, I usually sell it for a grand. And I only say that just because I think it's really cool. And for me, I'd rather have you in our network and just get that as a bonus. So you'll walk away with that. Oh. What is that? What's that? The, here it is. It's right here under the I missed the slide. Sorry. <laughs> of bonuses. So here's what you get. If you do the year package, you're going to get the 147 Ways to Generate Leads CD. You're going to get an audio version of my CD, Get More Referrals, another audio version of How to Explode Your Contact List. Okay. You're also going to do a Google Hangout with me personally and drop it, in, drop it into our network. We'll do that as the introduction into the network. Uh, you're going to get a website review. That website review is probably the most important thing on this entire page. And that's going to be done by David and his organization. These guys have this so down and so dialed in, and they know exactly how to get you in front of the more people uh, and get your message ac across. So that'll be actually implemented by David and his crew. He didn't know I was going to throw it in there. I was speaking on his behalf. right? Um, and finally, we'll train you or your VA. So are there any questions, comments, concerns, awesomeness? Was this cool? Was this impe uh, OK, cool. So join the collaboration. I just wanted to figure out how to put a sign that said no running on here. So this is, this is my slide. So David, I just want to say thank you so much for what you do and what you bring to um, the business community at large. And as I wrote on my Amazon review of you yesterday, that what I love about what David is doing is he's always out three or four steps out in front. He's working in the space of where the 15-year-olds are today. So what he's doing. <laughs> Right? So what he's doing today is here to help you going forward. And so I just want to thank you for everything that you do for the business community, having me here. And that's it, you guys. I'll be around all day.